Hello Internet, hello folks. In this video I will use the open source software FreeCAD and prepare a milling job for my Genmitsu 4030 CNC. The aim is to mill a profile and the pocket tool path. We will design a simple 3D object, prepare the model for CNC machining, create a tool path, prepare the post processing and exporting the GRBL based G code and finally mill the pocket with my CNC. Ok, let's have a look how it turns out. I'm using FreeCAD, an open source parametric 3D model modeler made for the design of real life objects of any size. FreeCAD is designed to fit a wide range of uses including product design, mechanical engineering and architecture. Our CAD model is kept very simple and should be easy to follow. Here is my workflow. So we are in a part design workbench. Create a body as a starting point. With the body selected, this is the default setting, create a sketch. Use the XY plane as the base plane for your sketch. And then with that sketch in place, you can create a 3D object or modify an existing model in 3D space afterwards. Use the circle tool to draw a circle starting from the center point of the plane. Then insert an arc constraint to define the radius. That's all for our first sketch. Close the sketcher now. Use the padding tool to create a 3D object, in this case a cylinder. Please know that I am extruded in the negative direction. So there is a checkbox re reversed. Um, this will make it easier for us to create the milling path afterwards as the origin point is on the top level surface of the workpiece. Now we want to create the pocket. Therefore we create a new sketch on the cylinder as I already explained, and create a circle as in the example before. After you close the, this additional sketch, you can use the pocket tool to create a pocket. With this we have created our basic object. Now we start to define the machine processing. To do this we use the following steps. First we switch to the path workbench. Then we use the job icon to create a new job and select the design object to be processed from the model tree. In our case it is the cylinder body. Creating a new job, FreeCut immediately jumps to the setup dialog for the stock material. Here I can define the stock dimensions. We will start milling directly on the top side of the material, so no addition on the top side is required. If you like, you can add additional stock material on the left and right and the bottom side. It's up to you. In Output tab you can define the post processor format. I have a GRBL based controller, therefore I select GRBL code in the drop down. I also defined an output file pattern using some of the FreeCAD variables, but this is optional. In the Tools tab, add the tools that you want to use for the job. I used a straight router bit with two flutes uh, and a 3 limit and a 3 mm diameter. Um, I picked the feed rate of 150 mm per second horizontal and 100 mm per second vertical speed 
and I set the spindle to 12,000 RPM. The work plan tab will later include the different toolpath operations. Close the job dialog and press the OK button. Now let's define the toolpath for CNC machining. As a first step, I create a profile toolpath. I selected the outer face of the cylinder and use the profile tool to create a path. Now I look at the different tabs, profile dialog. The base geometry is the outer face of the cylinder. As a next step, I change the depth parameters. The start depth is the maximal set value where we start milling. Each of the depth fields contains predefined variables that can be edited using the setup sheet, which is located in the model tree. You can also delete the predefined values and insert your own settings directly. The only thing I changed here was the step down value. And again, I picked two millimeters, let's say 60%, 70% from my tool diameter. Normally you can have a step down depth that has the size of the diameter of your router bit, but this was too much for me with this stock material. This plywood is pretty hard. I still figuring out how the machine behaves and step by step I push the limits a little bit further. To create a pocket toolpath, I selected the bottom surface of the pocket in my model. Then I also adjusted the step down and the final depth in toolpath settings. We can use the default settings as they are already set. We will, the direction is clockwise, no extra offset necessary and no special start point for this task. This was my, my first basic setup. I did not define any tabs to hold the workpiece, assuming the double-sided tape will hold the cutted piece in place. Okay, so far so good. With the pocket toolpath in place, I decided to run a simulation to see what my final product would look like. And I saw in the pocket toolpath that there are some left there is some leftover material from the zigzag pattern to have a cleaner edge um, toolpath I changed the pattern to zigzag offset which also cleans up the edge geometry I also added a, a ramp movement to the profile and also to the pocket toolpath um, uh, with the ramp movement, the router bit does a little bit of a zigzag movement while going down into the material. Part dress ups can be used to add additional behavior to the toolpath. You find the dress up um, menu item under the top level menu path and path dress up. Now I simulate the toolpaths one last time before I start to milling my workpiece. To export the GRBL G code, select the job and use the post process icon to export your code. Keep in mind, set the correct post export data format using the output tab of the job settings. Otherwise, your CNC controller will not work as expected. After I exported the G-code, I loaded the G-code in my G-code sender application. In my case, I use Candle, which comes with the Genmitsu 4030. To fix the stock material on the machine, I use double-sided tape.
Okay, with the stock material in place, I marked the center point of my workpiece and, and defined the origin of the work coordinate system, the X and Y position, and I used the Z probe to define the Z position. To fix the stock material on the machine, I used double-sided tape and it failed. I had to abort the milling as you can see. Maybe if I change the order starting with the pocket, but without taps it is easy to break your router bits when a part becomes loose during the milling. Okay, back to FreeCut. Yeah, FreeCut offers a nice solution here. It's very easy to modify existing toolpath by using a toolpath dress up. You can find the dress ups under the top level path menu and I used a um, tag dress up for the profile path in combination with a ramp dress up. Have a look at the created path to see the effect. And I did also um, use a ramp dress up for my pocket toolpath to add a little bit of movement while the router goes down into the material uh, and it should prevent the router bit from overheating for example. But have a look at the created path to see the effects you see that okay with the path dress up in place I run a final simulation and then the same procedure, export the G-code file, load it in the G-code sender in which um, I use candle, which controls my... And then let's see what the outcome looks like. As you can see in the first simulation, there were some artifacts left on the inner side of the pocket. Therefore, I changed the pocket toolpath pattern to zigzag offset and it created a nice path along the inner side of the pocket. Maybe you can change this, um, maybe you can also change the step over percentage, um, maybe you can also change the step over property um, and change it to 70% to have some overlapping of your toolpath. It takes longer for the milling process, but also creates a cleaner surface.
This time it worked and the milling was done cleanly. I'm happy with the result and I'm using it as a starting point for a number of smaller milling projects. Freeka did a pretty good job, even though the path workbench is still in an early version. But for a freely available open source software, the result is very respectable and a large part of projects could be realized with it. I will do some more tests and post them on my channel. As always, suggestions and questions, just write them in the comments. I don't need to repeat that like and subscribe thing, but I'm happy about that too. It would be super good to get some feedback on this video. So that's it for today. Have fun with your projects. Thanks for watching. Bye, Freedom.